Today we're going to talk about the five dimensions that Hofstede has identified and then we're going to break down each one and then discuss the Chinese culture and the dimensions that they practice as a culture. The first dimension is the power distance. So this would be how a society handles inequalities. Um, within a more higher power distance society, um, that would be one that has more disconnected members that feel their presence is not important within society. Whereas a culture with a lower power distance score would strive to equalize the distribution of power and demand justice for inequalities. My personal approach on this power dimension um, or power distance would be a lower power distance um, because because I would want to strive to ensure that all members of the community felt um, heard and important and that just injustices were um, eliminated and worked toward having a more fair and justice society. The second dimension would be individualism versus collectivism. Within an individualism society, the individuals are expected to care for themselves and their family. They take a very I mindset, what benefits me, how can I get ahead, whereas a collectivism approach would be more of a we approach and what might be more, um, best suited for the society rather than just myself. Personally, I take more of a collectivism approach within my leadership and work toward creating um, a more common goal that benefits the group rather than just myself. And then the third dimension would be masculinity versus femininity. Um, a higher score culture would be considered a masculine society. Um, that would mean that the society would be driven by more competition, achievements, and success. And success might be defined by a winner or best in the field. The value system would start in school and continue throughout um, adult life in an organization or company. Um, a society with a lower score would be considered a feminine culture, um, which would mean that the more dominant values in society would be caring for others and for the quality of life. A feminine society um, again, just puts a priority of that quality of life and um, considers that to be a sign of success and standing out from the crowd isn't necessarily admirable. Um, I would tend to lean more towards a feminine approach personally, um, just again in the fact that we're looking out for all members of society and caring for the quality of life um, and understanding that that is the definition of success, not necessarily being the best. The fourth dimension would be uncertainty avoidance, which is um, kind of when a culture looks into the future either as should we try this or should we just sit back and kind of let it happen however it's supposed to happen. Countries with a lower um, uncertainty avoidance score um, don't feel as comfortable stepping out of their comfort zone and that can sometimes result in fewer gains and less expansion because there may be a fear of stepping out and trying something outside of the box, whereas countries with a higher under uncertainty avoidance score um, may maintain a higher tolerance for uncertainty and are more prepared for thriving in a fast-paced um, enterprise. I tend to lead more towards a higher uncertainty avoidance um, in just the sense that it's okay to step out of my comfort zone and try something new, try something outside of the box um, instead of just sitting back and not taking a risk. Um, so that would be my personal approach when it comes to that. And then the fifth dimension would be a long-term or short-term orientation. So this dimension essentially describes how every society has to maintain some kind of link or tradition to their past while also dealing with current challenges and future challenges that may come. 
Within a normative society, um, which would be a lower score um, in this dimension, they would probably prefer to maintain traditions and um, view society, like societal changes with suspicious, um, with suspicion and more caution rather than excitement. And then those with a higher score um, probably would take more of a pragmatic approach and they encourage more thrift and efforts in modern education as a way to prepare for the future. I think for this, it's a little bit harder to identify. Um, I do think it's important to have a, a good balance of this just to kind of maintain traditions and um, you know, if it's not fixed, don't break, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So you would kind of want to just maintain things that are working. But also, I think it's important to take a pragmatic approach and just um, put more efforts out there and be really well educated to more prepare for the future. So my personal beliefs on this kind of take um, a little bit of both into consideration. And then we're going to kind of dive into China and their culture and then the dimensions in which they um, take on. So the first one is the power dimension. So China scores a very high ranking in this with a score of 80. And they do believe that inequalities among people are acceptable. They're okay with um within a subordinate and superior relationship, for instance, um, that can tend to be polarized and there's really no defense against power abuse um, that could be conducted by superiors, um, which personally does not align with my viewpoint. Um, and then the individuals in China are more influenced by formal authority and sanctions are generally optimistic um, regarding the capacity of people leadership and initiative. Um, it's kind of thought that people should not have aspirations beyond their ranking and they're just kind of expected to fall in line and do what's expected of them um, and not put up much of a fuss. China's approach to the power dimension overall does not align with my personal beliefs, um, which would be obviously I would want to give more power to a subordinate and listen to their needs and adapt and help them become the best version of themselves. Um, I don't I don't believe in um, limiting a person's aspirations and abilities, um, but instead encouraging them to um, become the best version of themselves, as I mentioned. And then within the next dimension, um, China is definitely a more collectivism society rather than an individualist an individualistic society. Um, they have a score of 20 within this dimension and they are, again, highly collectivist. Um, people oftentimes act in the interests of the group and not just of themselves. In-group considerations affect hiring and promotion with closer in-groups receiving special treatment in, in some cases. The employee commitment to the organization is low, but the relationships with colleagues are cooperative. Um, however, hostility may begin to occur with different out groups. And then the personal relationships oftentimes prevail over the task or company. Um, thirdly, China is a masculine society. They have a score of 66, which um, again, just makes it very success oriented. Achievements are highly um, looked at as high, high successes. Many people actually oftentimes even sacrifice their family or personal hobbies or leisure time for work to try to become the most successful. Um, service industry workers may oftentimes provide their services late into the night and they don't have a good set working hours and they just kind of um, put more of a priority on their work than anything else. Again, leisure time is not prioritized. And even in some cases, um, different workers may oftentimes leave their families behind to move to bigger cities um, and obtain better work or pay. Um, like I said, even if that means leaving their families behind. And then when it comes to students, they often will prioritize higher test scores and rankings. And again, really strive to be the best in their class um, or rank the best on um, different test scores. 
This personally does not align with my personal beliefs. Um, I do believe in more of a work-life balance. And when it comes to students, I feel that they should kind of have a good balance again, strive for success, but not make it their whole identity. I think that can lead to anxiety, depression, or even other mental um, illnesses, which could have very devastating effects. Um, so... As I mentioned, that does not align with my personal beliefs. And then the next dimension um, within China would be the uncertainty avoidance. Within this dimension, China scores um, a 30, which is low. They This means that they will adhere to laws and rules, um, but that might be more flexible with, in order to cater to situations. Pragma pragmatism is just a fact of life within China and ambiguity is comfortable within the culture. They can, they are very adaptable and very entrepreneurial and 70 to 80% of Chinese businesses are small to medium sized and are family owned. So again, take a very um, serious approach to the businesses and creating success. And then lastly, China is um, takes on the approach of a long-term orientation when it comes to the long-term versus short-term orientation dimension. They do have a score of 87 in this category. And people oftentimes believe that the truth uh, can be dependent on situations, context, and time, um, which again doesn't necessarily align with my beliefs. I think the truth should never really be dependent on anything. It should instead be very factual and really not up for any type of negotiation. Um, the Chinese culture is able to adapt traditions um, to changed conditions um, and saving and investing is highly prioritized as well. So those are the five dimensions of China and as mentioned throughout there are definitely some aspects of the culture that don't personally align with my personal leadership style but I do tend to lean more towards um, the collectivism approach of the culture and believe it is best to take into account the whole group instead of oneself as prior as uh, currently mentioned. So um, that's that.